And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to Here Comes the Bride. I have my wonderful friend here. Her name is Nicole Taylor, and she is about to tell us, I mean, a phenomenal story concerning her bride story concerning her meeting her husband you guys get ready for this one i mean tell your friends tell your homies tell your sisters at church i'm telling you this one is going to be as the kids say the big one this is gonna be the big one i'm telling you this one is going to be amazing this is for the prophetic deep girlies those who say hey listen my story is a little bit different dr alexis can you bring somebody on who's having dreams visions and experiences and encounters that god is speaking to them concerning their mate and so listen i have someone coming on she's a good friend of mine out of uh out of uh where do you you're out of dallas right dallas yes. you're out of here right dallas the yes dallas i'm area. in prosper you're in prosper i always wanted to live in prosper because prosper is like prophetic i want to prosper <laughs> right? even as my soul prospers so you live there with yourself and who um, uh, my husband and I, we live here. We moved here. Um, it's going to be almost two years now. So we just moved here. I'm still getting acclimated to the environment and to the, you know, to the whole state of Dallas, of course, it's really big. Um, but yes, in Prosper, Texas. So my husband and I are four kids. We're here. Awesome. Well, welcome to the Texas area. I've already welcomed you in person. I'm so glad that we got uh, connected. Um, Nicole, can you tell the audience what exactly you and your husband do? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity of having me come on just to share my story. I truly appreciate it. Um, so my husband is an engineer. Um, he's a senior engineer. And I am. Um, I do coaching. I do mentoring. I do. There's a lot of things I do. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. You know, um, but my main, main thing that I do is I really just cultivate my family. My priority is my family, my children, my husband, and um, just building that. And then whatever the Lord calls me to do, I'll just do after. But the main thing is coaching and mentoring and um, and um, just ministering to women to encourage and build them. Yes, you guys actually have a a platform that I came <clears throat> on on um, on uh, what's the app called again? It's on Telegram, the prayer channel. On Telegram, which I need to yes. talk to you about after this, because I've been trying to figure that app out. I can't understand it, so I'll get, with you. <laughs> yes. I'll get my coaching in on the side. Like, <laughs> yes. Okay, so I wanted to, you, you know, we've talked several times, and when you were sharing with me your love story, I was thinking, I, I remember telling you, like, let me repent right now. Let me go ahead and repent because I often say this type of stuff is just weird. Uh, can it can it happen? And I think that it's going to just help so many uh, people. So I don't know where we can start, but I guess where where would you like to start? How you met your husband or? Yeah, I could start there. I could start yeah. with how we met. So basically, my husband and I, we've known each other for over 14 years. We were friends. Um, he always, you know, had a liking to me from the time that we were in middle school. And, um, you know, he when we were in middle school, he said to me, oh, I'm going to make you my wife. I didn't have any attraction to him. I was like, no way, um, because at the time he was kind of chubby, you know, <laughs> and I was kind of like, no. Um, but once when we got into high school, we would always because, again, we kept in contact because we were friends. But as we got into high school, we, you know, crossed paths again. And that's when things changed because he was like working out and doing, you know, uh, making sure that he was getting fit and things of that nature. And I began to have an attraction to him physically, even though we were friends. It was just like, oh, wow, he completely changed. And um, we kept in contact then to fast forward into that um my um um after that i was in another relationship because he took he moved away and then as he, i went and as i was in another relationship it was um my daughter's father so i was in that relationship for about a good four years and then once when that relationship ended i was a single mother for up to probably four to seven years and within that time, we still kept in contact as friends, just talking. Our relationship was very pure. Um, you know, whenever we wanted to even talk or try to get to spark something, either he was in a relationship or I was. So we kept missing each other in between that time. Then um, 
then after that, just to fast forward, after we, you know, finally had an opportunity to actually connect, what's interesting is that before he left to go to Indiana, because he had finished his degree, you know, for engineering. And once when he finished that, he moved to Indiana to start working. And before he left, he said, hey, you know, I would love for you to connect with my mom. And again, it was just really from a pure place of, you know, you're a single mother. My mom is a single mother. She can really just kind of mentor you and kind of just help you, you know, in your journey. And he connected me with her, <clears throat> excuse me. And once when we got connected, um, it, it was it was so beautiful because I was really asking the Lord, Lord, what is my relationship to his mom? And the Lord said to me, your relationship with her is like Ruth and Naomi. And he said, you stay close to her until your Boaz come, not knowing that my Boaz was going to be her son. So we stayed connected. And um, I mean, everywhere we went, everyone knew, oh, this is her daughter. Like, like I was a daughter to her, you know, so our relationship blossomed and bloomed just so beautifully. And, um, you know, we still kept in contact as friends. We would always share our experiences with the Lord, our supernatural experiences. You know, we would always share, you know, dreams or visions with each other. So everything was just strictly about, oh, my goodness, the Lord is doing this and God is doing this in our lives. And wow, I'm so excited for you. I'm happy for you. Like we just always encouraged each other. Now, in the process of that, the Lord was giving me dreams about him consistently. And when the Lord was giving me dreams about him, he never knew about it until we got married. So I was, go ahead. Did you want to say something? No, I'm just like consistently like, so like <clears throat> how many, like a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. So, so basically what are happened. Share, so are you able to share some of the dreams like with us? Okay. Yeah. Please. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we, um, once when we got connected, well, not even got connected, but we were just friends. Um, the Lord would constantly give me dreams about him. The Lord would constantly show me things about, you know, where he was at or what he was getting into, or even if he was in a relationship that was not the will of God for his life, um, you know, showing me and I would get dreams and I'm like, Lord, why, why am I keep getting dreams about him? Like, I don't even care, you know, about anything, you know, he moved on, I'm moving on, you know, whatever. Um, it was to the point that one time I got really upset with the Lord because I'm like, I don't want to have these dreams about him. Like, why am I getting these dreams? I mean, it was to the point that I was like, you know, I sever anything, you know, rebuking it, canceling it, rejecting it and all of that. But the Lord was actually training me to actually to be an intercessor for him before being his wife. Ooh, and, that thing yeah. is good to me <clears throat> to mm -hmm. be an intercessor before becoming his wife. Now I will say this when I, before I met James, um, years ago, before mm -hmm. I even knew I was going to marry him, I used to pray for the man who I would marry. And I would say like, I sever any relationships, soul ties, cancel this, da, da, da. I pray mm -hmm. for this. I pray for so and so and so and so. So in, so you had prophetic intel concerning his life. God was giving you intel concerning what was going on. And you're sitting up here interceding on his behalf. Yes. Wow, yes. Nice. So I would, you know, intercede, pray for him. Um, I would have dreams of, again, just wrong relationships or even just women trying to trap him through witchcraft or manipulation. Um, you know, I would have dreams about his destiny, about business, about ministry, about who he was and what he was called to do. So I would just pray in that direction. I would pray about you know, what God has called him to do. I would pray about, you know, um, just the Lord rescuing him out of situations. I never prayed, Lord, he's my husband. I never prayed, Lord, bring him to me. I never prayed any of that. As a matter of fact, he didn't even know any of it at all. And I used to, I had probably about five journals of dreams concerning him. So once wow. when we, yeah. So once when we got married, I was able to give all the journals to him and he would read each and every one of them and watch the timeline of the journal. So the date that I put on the journal, he would remember, oh my goodness, I was going through that on that same day. And I got out of it, not knowing that I was interceding for him at the time that he got out of that situation because of the dream. So. That is amazing. So God gave you this <clears throat> intel for your future husband that you did not know was your future husband. Now, were you liking him at this time when you was having these dreams 
Okay, so you were liking yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was definitely attracted to him. The, and the only reason why I was attracted to him is because I knew that he was a man of integrity and he was respectable. Um, because when we were friends, he did put a boundary on our friendship. If he was in a relationship with someone, he knew how to put a boundary on our friendship. And he would say, hey, Nick, you know, I'm in a relationship. I can't really talk, you know, this often or, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, OK, no problem. You know, whatever. So when I saw that, I always said to myself, he's a man that I will be able to trust, because if he could put a boundary in a friendship with me. Uh, while he's in a relationship, it goes to tell me that he's a man of integrity. So I was already seeing his character, recognizing that this is someone that is, you know, that I can trust, you know. Um, and as we continue to build that, you know, we we began to blossom into, you know, the courting, not courting, but once once when he came to said, hey, I want to, you know, start bringing the relationship to the next level. That's when I was like, oh, my goodness, because, again, I, I was seeing things through dreams and it wasn't just dreams about, oh, we're going to get married. It was more dreams about his destiny business or him and I doing business together or him and I doing ministry together. It was never about walking down the aisle. You know, it wasn't anything like that. It was just more of purpose. So I knew, OK, this is my destiny partner. This is someone that I'm supposed to fulfill things with. This is someone I'm supposed to be in connection with, whether if it's marriage or not, because in my mind, I was still thinking, Lord, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I don't over spiritualize this or even use um, spiritual language to try to manipulate the process of what you're doing. Because some people will use that and say, oh, God said I'm supposed to be your wife. God said, you know, because I dreamt this, so you're supposed to be with me. And people even do that today. You have married people or even someone that is already married. But some woman will say, oh, that's supposed to be my husband, when really it's a lie from the pit of hell that no, that is not. In some cases, some people may make the wrong decisions and get married outside of the will of God, because again, it's still your will. You you still have to be willing to submit and agree with the will of God concerning your life. Um, yeah, I wanted to I wanted <laughs> to interject here and just say this, that, you know, I I, I have a group of, I mean, maybe 60,000 women. I mean, maybe I don't know, 10,000 or 20,000 people to watch this broadcast, depending. And so people, you know, all all around the world who are who see these prophetic um stories or who let me think I think some people are operating illegally when it comes to this prophetic love story stuff and why I say that is because I've seen people who say I had a dream and this dream means this and they do not yet know how to interpret their dreams or even to understand how the Lord speaks to them or even to know if maybe God is using that person is not the person in your situation. It was the person. It was also a man who also liked you back. You know what I'm saying? So let's put that out there. He liked you as well. Now, I'm not saying that God can't give somebody a dream that somebody does does like them, you know, doesn't like them. But it just has become borderline where women go on fast. They begin to like fast the person into their life, pray and make and try to, you know, say that they're theirs. And it just can get really it can get witchy. And I, mm -hmm. I want to caution women to not believe every dream, but to test and to try mm -hmm. the spirit to know, okay, this is not, I'm not being led astray by a dream, you know, because a dream is not always the only marker. It is not just like, oh, I had a dream, you know, yes, you had several dreams, but you also had a man who also liked you too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's so good because it can shift into borderline witchcraft if you're not careful, because sometimes some dreams can be made up from out of the soul because of the desire, um, you know, and that's why I had to really test these dreams. And that's why I told you, you know, when I was get the dreams, I'm, I would get upset with the Lord, like, Lord, why I keep dreaming him? Like, what's going on? And it, it just like I just felt the heavy mandate to just pray for him like what God is doing with him. Again, not anything concerning him and I, it was just where, you know, where he's at, what's going on with him and just kind of interceding for him. Um, 
So we, so I, I went through that process after going through that process. Now, when I finally got connected to his mom, he moved away to Indiana. He came back when he came to visit, I was living in Miami. And when he came to visit, you know, he, because again, he had his own um, standards or expectations. So his own vow, he made it, he had a own, his own inner vow, which was he would never marry a woman that has a child. So he, in his mind, his mind was already blocked of, oh, Nick is just my friend. Nick is just my friend. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you Wait know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> so what ended up happening with that vow? Because clearly you you was a single mother. Absolutely. So what's interesting is that, you know, he had that vow and he said, and I'm sure he'll be able to share his side of the story, but he said that when he saw me, because I was with his mom and we would go out and do things. And he said, when he saw me, it's like he felt the Lord said to him, where are you ever going to find someone like that? Where are you ever going to find someone that is committed to me and that loves me and that, you know, that, that you can build a life with? And he started to have an attraction to me, not saying that he wasn't attracted to me before, because again, remember, he always had a heart for me from when we were in middle school. But again, the boundary that he put up or the interval that he put up was that, okay, Nick has a child. So, okay, it's really not an option. Like, it's not like we're not going to go there. Um, so that's when, so when he began to pursue me in the relationship, I would always tell him, are you sure? Are you sure? Remember, I have a child because I never really wanted to enter into a relationship, especially as a single mother, just thinking about myself. I was really thinking about, okay, Lord, can a man really love my daughter as its own? And if that is the case, I want to make sure that this person is really taking this seriously. It's not just about me and the person, but okay, I have a child involved. Are you ready to be an instant father? Are you ready to take on that role? Um, um, and he was like, yeah. But what was interesting to me is that every time I would have like an unbelief about the relationship, he would always prove me wrong. And he would always be like everything he did was actionable. Everything he did, it was like, OK, this is what we're doing. OK, this is what. And I was and he started to set standards and boundaries. And that gave me the security and the stability to even trust him and be like, OK, this is really real, you know. Um, so we stepped into that. Um, we stepped into the, so our, our, I would say courting, engagement and married, we, it was really quick. It was like three to six months. It wasn't even, I don't even think we got to six months. So when he finally mm-hmm. said like, Hey, Nick, I'm trying to holler. Were you, not that he used those words. He, said, no, no. Sure he, was, a little <laughs> more, uh, he was a little bit more, you know, but, um, <laughs> He had a little bit more acumen than that, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, or decorum. But when he came to you and said this, were you kind of like, oh my gosh, it's all happening at once? Did you go on this like 525,600 day fast beforehand? Like, what was your preparation thing before the moment that he said, yes, you're for me, twin, where have you been? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? Like, what? <laughs> so so basically in that time you know just things building I was still kind of apprehensive because I was like, Lord, I don't want to, because I had already made a vow to the Lord. I told the Lord as a single mother, you know, I had just got a little place. I was working and I said, Lord, I will not leave this place until you send my husband to literally come and move me from here. And I would always set my place up as a place of memorial, as prayer, as an as a altar of prayer to always engage with the Lord. And I told the Lord, you know, that you're going to be my husband. You're going to be my provider. You're going to be, you know, the father to my daughter while I'm a single mother. So because I took my relationship with the Lord so seriously, I was a little bit like, oh my goodness. Like, yes, I was excited, but at the same time, I'm like, Lord, are you sure? Lord, is this right? I was still inquiring and asking him every step of the way, even up to the wedding day. 
I was still like, Lord, are you sure? Is this it? And this was really it. The Lord was like, yes, this is it. You can enjoy. I did it up to the wedding day. I did it during my wedding. I mean, I just be like, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, I just always go before the Lord. Like, listen, I just want to be in your will, Father. So I understand. So you literally asked, like, as I was walking down the aisle, I was crying. And I was like, Lord, now I want to make sure that this is you. Okay. <laughs> Cause I didn't did stuff in my own life, but I want to, everything seems right. That's the thing. Like I've seen women who've had so many signs. I mean, the signs had signs, you know, and the Bible actually says that a foolish generation looks to a sign. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that, but like, I know that God can use wonders to, to let us know that he's in the midst of something, but I've seen people who've had all types of signs you know, but mm -hmm. it still didn't pan out. And somebody's watching right now who said, listen, Nicole, I've had, Alexis, I've had these signs, like, but it didn't work out. And they're like depressed. They're like, et cetera. What would you say to that woman? I mean, I would say, you know, first of all, I'm sorry, you know, that you went through that. I think one of the things is also just kind of going back to see that again, just paying attention, like, like, like you said, the person had you know, have had all the signs leading up to stepping into something. There could be two things that's taken place. Either, you know, number one, it was just something from out of your soul and it was, you know, you creating it or making this up, or maybe your desire for it was so overwhelming to the point that you created things that was not really there. Or number two, this was something that was snatched from you. Um, and the only reason why I would say would be those two things is because when you're talking about the Lord being involved, the Lord is the one when he's really bringing something together. I truly believe that, you know, again, it takes the will of the person. It's not just, you know, OK, I'm doing it and that you could force the person because your will is stronger to win the person over. It's like, no, that person have to be willing to say this is what I want to step into. Um, it could have went left for us too, you know, because again, the Lord was giving me dreams. He didn't know about it, but the Lord spoke to him. He could have been like, nah, you know, she's still a single mother. And I don't know if I want to go that way. His will could have been, no, let me go seek out something else, you know? Um, so it took two people <clears throat> two people's will and God will never override right. another human's will. That is what I'm trying. I've tried to let people know. Cause I've been there in a situation where a man of God said, listen, I do not want this. I know about the prophecies. I know about all of that, but I don't want this. And the Lord led me, um, to the, to the verse where Samuel, where God tells Samuel to stop mourning over Saul to get up and to go anoint the king because yeah. he knew that that guy would not accept the word of the Lord, although mm -hmm. he was with it. But then all of a sudden he wasn't with it no more. Right. Mm -hmm. He's like, I just don't want to. That man is still single now. Right. It's been almost 10 years, 12, 12 years. And he's still unmarried now. That's mm -hmm. what he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? And so God wasn't going to override his will because he still loves him. Mm -hmm. And so he, so he said, okay, you don't want to do that. Go this way, go this and do this. He still loves him. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't. And you know, really it wasn't going to be the best thing for me either. When I look at it to try yeah. to force somebody that to love me, love unrequited mm -hmm. is horrible mm -hmm. where you love someone more than they love you. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. I truly believe that the man God has for the women who are listening is going to love them just That's like right. Christ loves the church That's and right. Christ loves us more than we could ever Love That's right. Him. Amen. 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 Yes, I truly believe that. So, so, so believe that. And then also, too, just for women to understand that you are already loved, whether if you have the person or not, you know, and to be content with that and to enjoy that and to have fun with that. I truly believe that if I did not reach to my place of contentment with the Lord, I probably would have over um, glorified, you know, um, glamorized or use my marriage as a glory, you know, um, 
pedestal or, or as a glory figure to the point that that becomes an idol to me, you know, and rushing into something where the Lord is like, you know, hey, <clears throat> you know, or even making the wrong decisions or making mistakes in the midst of that. So I think it's important to understand the contentment that you can have in that, you know, because godly contentment is great gain. And, you know, when you have that contentment, even though you may have the desire for marriage, that is not wrong, but don't allow that zeal or that desire to cause you to move out of the wisdom of God, you know? Yeah. It's okay to want to be married <clears throat> because a lot of people be like, uh, you idolize it, man. Da, da, da. I want it to a mm -hmm. husband i would cry like lord i want a husband and so my heart for the unmarried women is so strong because mm -hmm. i remember and i am not one to be like oh i'm prideful now that i got married like girl i got married and now i'm in the other side of the marriage things that happen and the things you're waiting for and, da -da 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 and all this stuff so it's that side too. So don't mm -hmm. get it twisted. Enjoy your singlehood and enjoy wondering what's behind the next door mm -hmm. that God is going to introduce you to so that you can say, okay, I like this person. Enjoy mm -hmm. being courted. Enjoy talking to, to someone else just to see, is this a fit for me? I think that people should enjoy the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back to the, the story. I'm sorry. I interjected. You guys started dating. He told you, I want to, talk to you not mm -hmm. holler and then <laughs> and then um within a couple of months like he was looking for a ring or something how did that oh, how did that go so basically um once when he said okay hey i want you know basically to take you off the market um i was like okay so you know the relationship is going to the next level so i'm like okay um so it gave me <clears throat> excuse me it gave me a little bit more closer insight to see him in a different light and not just see him as, oh, my friend. But now the dynamics of our relationship has shifted where it's like, OK, now I am a girlfriend. Now we are courting. What what does this look like or feel like? And, you know, it felt kind of natural because, again, the foundation of courting should be friendship you know? Um, so it was kind of like that. So he brought me, so while he was in Indiana, I was in Miami. He got a ticket for me, got me a hotel and everything, paid for everything and said, Hey, I want you to come up and see me for the 4th of July weekend. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I went up to Indiana. Hold on one moment. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So I went to Indiana when we went to Indiana, um, we went to the outlet mall. And as we went to the outlet mall, um, he was very respectful, very cordial. Like I said, he took care of my, my stay. He got me at the, you know, he got my, um, my ticket. He paid for everything. Everything was taken care of. And, um, I remember we were walking in the outlet mall and then we stopped at Zales. And when we went there, I was like, okay, you know, so he's looking at the rings and he's like, oh yeah, I like this ring. And I always tell him this. I was like, babe, the way that you engaged to me felt like a business transaction because it was like, he's looking and he's like, oh yeah, I like that one. Okay, let's get that one. And he just put the ring on me. Like that was it. That's that engineer mind. Yeah. <laughs> The engineering man. Okay. So it, he, so he didn't ask you what, well, or you guys already knew though, that yeah. you were going to, you already knew that that's what it was going to be anyway. Yeah. yeah. So it was just like, okay, I'm going to just let it, let it yeah. ride. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah. So we, we kind of knew we were heading in that direction because again, my thing was, okay, if I'm going to enter a relationship, this needs to go for marriage. Because again, I have a daughter. I just can't date just to date. I don't, I can't do that. You know, so I knew, but I didn't know it was going to be so quick. That was my thing. So, yeah. Wow. And so then when you came back home, you were a fiance. And when did the wedding, did you, did you guys have a wedding or did you go to a courthouse or what'd you do? Yeah. So we had a wedding. So as soon as I got the ring, now wedding preparation started to take place and it was like, okay, you're going to, and everything was paid for. Like everything, he paid for everything. All I had to do was call him and say, oh babe, you know, flower arrangements, oh babe, food, oh babe, venue, oh babe, this. And he was like, okay, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. 
So he took care of everything. And of course, my mom stepped in, family members kind of stepped in and did things as well. So we, um, it, it happened quickly. We did, we got married. Um, after we got married, I'm telling you, the Lord really fulfilled what I spoke to him, the declaration I released as a single mother, just saying, Lord, you know, I am not leaving this place until my husband literally moves me. And that's exactly what happened. That as soon as we, as soon as we got married, my husband literally came to my place packed our stuff and moved us to Indiana right after. Wow. You are a woman of prayer. You are a woman of uh, prophecy, um, a fasting woman, all of those things. I think that some of the ladies would want to know uh, some of the things you had been praying. Um, some uh, what like even those who are single moms, what you were doing during that time as far as over your child or just, in general, to help them during their um, wait time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So during the process, you know, as being a single mother, one of the things I did was I was building my relationship with the Lord and I was having so much fun. It's like, I really felt so fulfilled in that relationship with the Lord that even the desire of having marriage, it was good and it was okay. But I was kind of like, God, I'm just so good with you. You know, it was just so good. Just the encounters, just talking with him, asking him stuff and then him revealing it to me, like just having that intimacy um, of him loving on me. I mean, I would have dreams of, you know, I used to journal and write letters to the Lord and I would have a dream of him responding back to me and him signing his name, Jesus, at the end. You know, I would have dreams of like roses and him giving me roses and flowers. Like he was really like loving on me, you know, like really. So I kind of felt like I was good, you know. Um, so in that process, especially with my daughter, one of the things I would do, I would cover my daughter. Um, I would pray over her. I would pray over, you know, myself and, you know, just kind of ask the Lord for the grace um, and just kind of really focus on fulfilling, you know, um, my single, the assignment of being single, because sometimes when women step into marriage so quickly, sometimes they end up grieving their single or they don't really take the time to grieve their single season because they step into the marriage still feeling like, you know, they still want to be single um, because they have not really learned how to transition well from that single phase to now being a wife. And I had to learn that, okay, it's not just me and my daughter and the Lord anymore. And I had to be okay with the fact that, you know, now that I'm getting ready to become a wife, um, that my relationship with God does not have to be on the back burner just because I'm a wife. And there was a, there was a silent fear of thinking that, oh man, am I going to miss you know, that intimate time with the Lord. But really when I stepped into covenant, my intimate time with the Lord amplified 10 times more than when I was single. I didn't have to toil and pray and war to get a word from the Lord anymore. It was like, I could have a conversation with my husband and the word of the Lord will come through him. I could have a conversation with him. I will go to sleep and the Lord will respond just quickly. It was just more, it was just more quickly than me having to be like, oh, let me just sit here and fast for hours or, oh, let me just, you know, and again, not saying that those things aren't important. They are. Um, but I was able to gain more access to him quickly once when I stepped into the will of God for the next phase of my life. I love that. When you handed him those books, were you just like, did you hand it like right off or like when did you hand it to him? So after we got married and after the honeymoon and we moved to Indiana, I was like, here you go. I just gave him all these books. He was like, what is this? And he sat down on the floor and read each and every one of them, turning the page, highlighting, circling, marking, and recognizing, oh, at this day I was doing this. Oh, here. And just recognizing the timeline of the Lord. And I mean, from that point on, he has actually been more diligent in stewarding my dreams more than me. So if I have a dream, he would, I would tell him and talk about it, but he would jot it down and he would take it as his own. So for him, it's like, I don't need a prophet to come to me. My wife would tell me, you know, what's going on or what's taking place. I'm not saying that we don't honor prophets, but for him, it's like, my wife will probably tell me before, you know, anyone else, just because of that connection. My husband is also a dreamer as well. We would dream, um, 
you know, we would have parallel dreams or we'll dream another part of a dream that I have and we'll put it together, you know, so we learn how to see from, you know, for each other in, in that time. I love something you said. You said that he steward stewards your dreams. Would you say for the dreamer and we'll kind of tap into prophetic dreams now Mm -hmm. for the dreamer stewarding, what are ways that they can steward their dreams? Because it seems that you're saying stewarding your dreams is important. So what does that actually look like? Yeah. So that looks like jotting down your dreams. It looks like recording it, whether if you have to speak, you know, and, and do that, whether putting a note, you know, um, recording it that way, um, paying attention to what was given to you, paying attention, what took place that week before you had that dream. Also paying attention of, um, what you entertained that, that same week, you know, what you watch, who you were talking to, is this dream about that person, or is it just symbolic, you know, to something else that may be going on? Um, is it literal, you know, and just really sitting down and kind of finding out what God is saying and then also finding scripture to kind of pinpoint what is being communicated because we know dreams are just images, pictures, visions, you know, um, these are pictures that God is trying to unveil and communicate to us in picture form that we have to decode to kind of say, okay, what are you saying to me? Because some of this stuff don't even make sense, you know, Um, but um, sometimes as you continue the journey and process through with him, he will begin to unveil it to you as you ask him for the interpretation. And it may come through various different avenues, through people or through reading or even watching a movie. I've had times where I would watch just a regular movie and the Lord will begin to speak to me or give me confirmation of my dream where I'm like, oh man, this thing is really real. It's in a movie, you know? So, so yeah, I would say that. Yeah, the Lord used movies actually to tell me that I was going to get married. I was in uh, the movie just, I was in watching the movie Just Right. And I just felt in my spirit that watching it was a prophetic action that I would get married. I went and watched that movie, I mean, maybe a hundred times. I mean, I've watched it so many times. Um, Not so much now that I'm married, but during the time that I was unmarried, I watched that because I just was like, I feel like God is confirming. And so I think that signs are important. It's just Mm -hmm. that we don't chase after signs you know, because the movies were important. I remember our family wedding was something that was important at that time. I could hear a song and, and I just like, it would be a love song. And I would feel like the Lord was speaking to me through that love song. Um, were there any instances like that outside of dreams for you? Oh yes, absolutely. The movie piece is really good. Um, because I remember watching Brown Sugar And when I watched that movie, it's so funny because they were friends (laughs) and he got married and then that wasn't the woman for him. He broke off the marriage and then he married the girl. So it was just so funny to see every time I would see that movie, I would think, you know, about us or the parallel of just us being really good friends. And then like, okay, you know, the Lord is going to, you know, bring something about that. So, um, so yeah, definitely that, you know, like I said, letters, you know, writing letters to the Lord and then him responding back, you know, and also just showing things, um, even just people coming up, you know, saying that, Hey, you know, this is about to happen or this is going to happen, you know, um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Remember when I fell in love with hip hop? Yeah, I love that movie. And actually, you guys kind of got it. Yeah, I would say <laughs> he got the ball head. Y'all kind of, I mean, yeah, I would say. And then isn't he like Jamaican and then yeah. Jamaican and you, okay. Or <laughs> Lord used this secular movie to speak to you about, you know, your private situation that was yeah. to come. I love that. And so ladies, yeah. that's something that you should think about. Like maybe there's a movie that you just feel a weight on. And when I say yeah. a weight, I just feel in the pit of my stomach like it's something that lo- the Lord is speaking through this and it is to come. I don't understand it now, but it is to come. And I, I want to ask you this as well. While you guys were friends and he may have been talking to other women or whatever, and it wasn't like he was out there, but he was like respectful, like, hey, you guys were friends. So yeah. he wasn't trying to, you know, um, how did you keep yourself from being just like possessive or, you know, calling him like crazy or because you just was like when he was like, hey, I can't really talk to you. You're like, OK, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really, really took it as OK, you know, because I respected him as a friend, it was easy for me to be like, OK, that's what he's doing. And what's so interesting is that, 
even when he was pursuing me, you know, to say, hey, I'm ready to take the relationship to the next level. I was still kind of like, I don't know if he's really that deep in the things of God. I don't know if he's really, I don't know, because again, I saw the pattern of his relationships, not knowing that he was just on a journey of trying to find the right person. I just thought, okay, you playing the field, you not taking this seriously. So I didn't really know the depth of his relationship with the Lord until we got, well, uh, well, when we were courting. And then to get married. And then I realized, oh my goodness, okay, he's really serious about the things of God. He was just really trying to find something out. So um, so yeah, it was just easy. It was easy for me to just be like, you know what? Okay, yeah, no problem. You know, we'll catch up later. And I kind of just left it there. So you weren't over there praying at your house, like break off the relationship. No. Okay, because mm-hmm. that that's when you say that you can get into witchcraft, right? <laughs> yep. This whole because some women might say, "Well, the Lord told me He was mine, and the girl He's with now is putting witchcraft on Him." So people use witchcraft as a buzzword now. Just FYI, I know. But, okay. <laughs> But so they may, and I'm not saying it's not real, but I'm just saying some people do use it as a buzzword. So. Um. Okay, what I was gonna say is, so they might say, "Well, I can pray and break the relationship uh, uh, off." What, is, what are your thoughts about that? I, I mean, for me, I trust God so much that if it's really for me, I don't have to do anything extra to try to get it or obtain it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do understand the concept of warring for the promise. Again, you know, Paul told Timothy war, you know, for the prophetic words that have been spoken over you, you know, engage in war, but I don't necessarily feel like it needs to be something where you are trying to intercept, um, a relationship that you think is yours when the other person is not even aware of that. Because I feel like that could be borderline witchcraft because if he's not aware and he's not on the same page with you, then you're, I believe you're opening up yourself to unnecessary warfare because what if, you know, okay, you break it off, but he still go with someone else is like, again, your will. Or even if, if he is aware and just doesn't want to be together, remember that is his will. And I think that women of God have to really stop looking. We have to just not look desperate or crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to look like you're not in your right mind. Like you Mm -hmm. don't want to, and believe me, I had times that I was just like, I'm just going to text him. I'm just going to text him. Let him know. And I'm just want to let him know. And you text the long text or whatever. And like, why aren't you responding and being possessive? And I really, Nicole, I did that in the world, right? I did that with in the world, like, you know, the crazy stuff, with somebody that I was with in the world for five years, you know, for five years or something like, Mm -hmm. so I did the crazy stuff because that's what it was like. The toxic was, it was just what I knew, but it's not healthy to be like that in the kingdom. right. right. We don't have to be like that. I did not, I am not like that with James, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that possessiveness is a covetedness actually an idolatry. And we have to really watch our behaviors that we did when we were once in the world. Mm-hmm. And now that we are kingdom citizens, we have to watch it because those mm-hmm. type of things can make people say, you're crazy. And even beyond that, it is crazy. It was mm-hmm. crazy for me to do some of that stuff. I remember one time I got so mad and this was in, in when I was when I wasn't walking with the Lord but I got mad at this guy that I've been with for like five years. I cut up all of our pictures, cut them up, wrote the B word on them, whatever, <laughs> put him. I put the pictures in front of his mother's house inside, of, <laughs> inside of the door so she could open them up. And, <laughs> well, I know she was going to open them up. But so he can open it up and know that I was over him. Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what? You know, and I'm sure some people listen and say they done played the fool too. Absolutely. So we have to be, um, you know, we have to have the fruit of the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Long suffering, you know, those type of things. We cannot be just out here. What do you think about that? 
Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely have to have the fruits of the spirit. Um, I remember a time, especially with my first boyfriend that I was with for five years. And I remember he cheated on me with another girl. And when he did, I remember showing up at his job. And it's so funny because the police came and everything. <laughs> I showed up at his job. I sliced his tires. <laughs> I threw his, um, yep. I threw his, um, <laughs> I threw Wait a minute. Yes. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. I didn't, I didn't the fl- you wanted to, you, you, you know. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I did um... that stuff. I can't believe it, Nicole. You are so sweet and kind and nice. <laughs> this was my BC Lord, days. Thank God for the salvation. <laughs> it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Uh huh. That's what broke it. <laughs> he probably thought. I remember one time I told I told the man I said I'm coming. I'm about to come. Cause that cheating stuff. It was that cheating stuff. I said yep. okay. I'm about to come over there right now. I got bleach. I got knives. I got all types of stuff. About to slice up his car and all mm-hmm. that. I don't know. It's like all that bust your window out your car. It just sounded good to me at the time. Yeah, this is yeah. Like right before that. But you know what? I can't believe you did that. I sure you just did. seem more peaceful. <laughs> no. Florida. Yes. Bro, that was that Florida stuff up yeah, in there. But the Bible says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. That surpasses all understanding. Uh-huh. Yes. Patience, <laughs> kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm-hmm. Nicole. The ladies got to have self-control. Yeah. That means do not send him 500 text messages if he's not texting you back. back. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that little fear can happen, right? When somebody says, mm-hmm. hey, I want to, I remember, you know, I want to date you or whatever. Like James had just, um, I remember I was going to try to fly there to Florida I'd already met him, but I was going to try to fly to Florida to meet him again. Now we had only talked we hadn't even talked on the phone. We had only text in inbox, but on Facebook, but I was like, and he didn't even text me and say he liked me or nothing, but I just was like, I'm going to make this happen. Okay. Cause I had stopped <laughs> talking to this other guy. So I was like, I'm about to make it happen. <laughs> so I got on that plane and I started feeling sick in the pit of my stomach. I also felt this way one time that I made a man food. Okay. That I wasn't supposed to, I felt like the Lord was like, don't do it. Don't do it. So, um, girl, I got on that plane. And I felt sick in the, in the pit of my stomach and the plane had to go to Orlando and then it had to go to Tampa from Orlando. Well, it ended up landing late in Tampa. I mean, in Orlando. So I would miss the flight to Tampa, which is where James lived. OK, all I had inboxed him was, hey, do you want to catch a, co- a cup of coffee? Now, he never responded for like two weeks or something. It's so crazy. So he didn't even see my message. All right. At this time, he had a Nokia phone. Somebody say upgrade because I did <laughs> upgrade the man of God. So anyway, um, <laughs> we girl, I end up um, getting on getting on that. Pl- I remember uh, I got off the plane. I had missed the connecting flight and I went to American um, Airlines at the time. And I said, listen, I missed the connecting flight. Can you guys just fly me back? I'm not going to go for it. You guys end up, you know, it was your guys's fault, whatever. They, they not only sent me back home, but they also gave me the money. Mm-hmm. And I knew then that the Lord was saying it was not the timing. It wasn't mm-hmm. my timing. And you are trying to do it, Alexis. Let me do it. Well, mm-hmm. the story is, is that on the 18th, of October, I had prayed that morning and asked the Lord to change the memory of that date because that was the day that my mother was found passed away mm. and was found dead. So I asked the Lord to change the memory of that date because two years prior, uh, this had occurred, right? In, tw- in 2014, which I met James in 2016, September the 4th. We did not talk officially on the phone until October the 18th when he hit me up and he would, he said, listen, I would have loved to done coffee with Mm. you. Now me knowing I was trying to manipulate because I didn't even drink coffee, girl. Come on. (laughs) 
But uh, he said, I would have loved to done coffee, do coffee with you. But let me ask you this. You, 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 you're smart, et cetera. What do you exactly do? Like, who are you exactly? Right. So that opened up the door. Then he going to ask me a question about the sons of Issachar. Well, you in my lane now. Okay. I'm going to talk about it. I don't really know a lot, a lot, but I'm going to talk about it. Like I do. Let me call you real quick and talk to you about it because I'm pumping gas and I don't want to be on this Facebook, um, Facebook chat chatting. So I'm going to call you. And so that right there, Open up the door to happily ever after, never end story of love. Okay. But you know, it was it was me saying that self-control piece, you know, yeah. it has to die. That compulsiveness, mm-hmm. you know, has mm-hmm. to die. Have you coached any of your women about being compulsive? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think one of the things too is um I tell women, never allow desperation to lead you into divination because when you're so desperate, baby, that's good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You might hear it it again, Nicole. You might hear it. I'll (laughs) shout you out, girlfriend. I like that. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, um, because again, preparation is not an option. It's an obligation. Right. And we want to make sure that we are obligated. We're, We're obligated to prepare ourselves and to get ready. And if you cannot you know, employ self-control now, you will not do it when you get married. It's actually going to amplify some of the stuff that you've been dealing with in the secret place. So, you know, yeah. So I tell them never allow that desperation to lead you into divination because when you're so desperate and you have that desire, you do not truly believe that God will do it. So you put your hands and you become crafty. And you put your hands to it and you try to get in the midst of it. And God is like, hey, now you're tapping into divination. I can't even put my hand in it. I can't even do anything. How, what would you say divination is? What, what would your definition be? I would say divination is basically the works of the flesh. You know, you witchcraft Mm. is the works of the flesh. Mm. So anything that you're doing to, for, for you to obtain, basically anything that you are doing that, you are trying to obtain something for selfish gain. I believe that divination is involved because you are trying to create and craft something that God did not ordain. Wow. So actually fasting can be a part of that, right? Fasting outside of the will of God. Now, did you know that the people um, fasted to kill Saul? Paul, they, they, they were fasting Mm -hmm. to kill him. Right. Although he was being bogus doing his stuff, but they were fasting to, of course you can't fast to do. Why are you fasting? That's not the will of God. Paul ended up being the one who wrote most of the new Testament. Right. So that was not the will of God. God knew that his life would change and he would become who he was and is to us. And so that's amazing. The works of the flesh. So anytime I, and I, and I did it. I just want to let it be known. My mother told me at a young age, she said, you could just pray for someone back. And Mm so I used to pray for boyfriends back after we had been together. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. I remember one time I prayed this guy back. I told this story. We broke up and um, we had been broken for a couple of months. I remember what my mom told me. I said, oh, I'm just going to pray him back. That day I prayed him back. A couple of days later, he was at my door. I hadn't seen him all summer. He was like, I can't eat and I can't sleep, right? And so I was like, man, this is crazy. This actually works. So I started doing it with the guy that I was, you know, we broke up for five, for kept breaking up for five years. I'm praying him back. Now, mind you, at the time, I was, I was a young girl who I knew the Lord. I knew the Lord at a young age, but I did not know mm-hmm. that that was witchcraft. I met my mentor, Ruth, when I was in grad school. The first thing she says to me is, she said, and I, I just finished a 21 day fast. The first thing out of her mouth, she was telling me, did you know that it's witchcraft to pray somebody back? Mm. I was like, what? Like, I did not know. My mom told me that, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's just an ignorance, but even with that, you know, I, I knew a girl, she would fast for boyfriends to come back. They would come back that it will work like a charm, but you know what? They would never stay. Why? Yeah. Because it was not the will of God, right? It was not mm-hmm. the will of God. I mean, so many times I did stuff like that, that I yeah. just didn't know. Right. So after she told me not to do that, I did not do that because I was like, that is just 
It's witchy, Alexis, right? But I just didn't know. I was ignorant to the devices of Satan. And not only that, but also doing things like this. I'm going to sow into his ministry. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm going to sow to him. I'm going to try to pay for this for him. Now, I did do stuff like that. That was mm -hmm. out of order too, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make this happen for him. I'm going to try to, you know, woo his love to me by 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 showing up, by, by, by doing this, doing that. You're out of order. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a need that he needs met and you may be his friend, like you trying to meet the need, you trying to come through and do whatever to make him see how great of a girl you are. That right there is out of bounds. It's That's witchcraft, true. right? And it is, and I, we hate to, it's works of the flesh. If you don't want to use witchcraft, it's works of the flesh. Flesh, mm -hmm. but there's manipulation in that, right? You creating um, an issue, like, oh, hey, um, this is going on in my life. Like, I need you, like, being that needy girl to create mm -hmm. the issue just so he can call you. Mm -hmm. It just <clears throat> is, you know what I'm saying? It's the things that we did in the world that yeah. you cannot do in the kingdom. Absolutely not. And I love what you said, because when you go back to the word of God, you see that Jezebel, Jezebel fasted for Naboth's vineyard. She told the people, come on, let's go for a fast and let's go ahead and throw stones at him and kill him because, and she made up the story and told them, let's go do this. So again, you know, when you're fasting to try to obtain, again, I always tell people fasting, the main objective for fasting is for you to have intimacy with the father. It is not just for you to you know, gain stuff. The stuff is amazing. Yes, you can fast. Again, the word of God says this time, I mean, this, this kind comes out through fasting and prayer. So yes, that's amazing. But also at the same time, fasting should be Lord. You know, I want to be intimate with you. Tell me, what do you want me to do? What should I be focusing on? Not just what I want, but what do you want me to focus on? You know, tell me what's on your heart, what's on your mind. Give me your secrets, being intimate with him and building, you know, that level of connection with him. And then also too, don't use fast because you have some people that feel like if I stay in that fasted place, then the enemy won't come get me. Or if I Sometimes some people fast from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to come against the enemy when really you're still not, a, this. that's still not the fast that God has chosen. That's the yeah. fast that you have chosen. Right. Is this you the know? fast that I have chosen? Because, you know, I used to go on a lot of fast when I was unmarried. I just want to, I mean, I remember one time. I went on a 10 day fast. I started talking to this guy. I went on a 10 day fast. I mean, I was like, he's fine. And he's mine. Moke and Steph on this tight remix. He's mine. Yeah, that was me. But girl, that was girl. And baby, I didn't eat. But you know what? It was just, it was just not it. He was not it. You know what I'm saying? And it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was like a, I don't want to say an attack. It was almost just like a, what's it called? It, it was just to distract me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because in my life, there were several times I thought maybe he's it. Maybe he, he's it. So I understand the girlies who are listening now who said, mm -hmm. girl, I thought that he was it. I don't know you as a mentor of women. Maybe they've texted you a guy's picture. Like mm -hmm. I, women text me guys pictures. Like, what do you think mm -hmm. about this guy? And so I'm not judging that, mm -hmm. but I do know that you know, sometimes I was just trying to fast my will to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but when I met James, I just want to keep it real. I did not fast with James. Mm -hmm. James fasted for five months that I would marry him mm -hmm. because I kept saying, I'm fasting from fasting. I'm done with that. <laughs> you don't have to make it work. If it is not supposed to work, I done did it. Mm -hmm. If it's not supposed to work, if it's going to work, it's going to work. And right. so that's when I realized the flow of God. And when we are in the flow of, of mm -hmm. God, it just happens. Things mm -hmm. just happen. And, and I had to release my control mm -hmm. and how I thought things were going to occur and accept who God had for me yes. instead of accept, instead of trying to make something happen with who I wanted. Yes, that's right. That's so, so good. And I could honestly say that 
Um, I fasted. So before we got married, we went through deliverance. And I believe that is so important, especially before you get married. I always tell women, you know, a healed and delivered you is the best gift that you can give to yourself your spouse, and to your children. So it's important to make sure that you go through that process to deal with the soul ties, to deal with the toxic relationships, to deal with the old connections and old attachments and things of that nature as you're stepping into the will of God for your life. Um, So we fasted that time. We both went through deliverance together. Um, The day of my wedding I don't even remember if I fasted, but I know I ate because I had oxtail. I had my Jamaican food. So the day of the oh, wedding, oxtail. I'm waiting yeah. for y'all to make me. I'm waiting <laughs> on you guys to make me some oxtail. You guys talk that Jamaican talk like you make the food. You have not invited me over yet to eat at your house. I'm just yes. About it. Yes. I'm going to we'll have you come. <laughs> So, so yeah, so oh, you had, ate that day. Come on. Oh yeah, I ate that day. We had such a good time. You know, I ate that day. Um, so I I didn't fast, you know, that day, but prior to it, going through the deliverance, we did because we wanted to get everything out. I do want to say this about the deliverance. Like that's a real <clears throat> place. Like even when I had a breakup, um, I had a session that same day that just happened to be i guess the lord set it up so we broke up one day i remember um not me and james but it was um Mm. another guy it was in after the nba finals the next day i had already had this deliverance session set up i went and sat with the people Mm -hmm. prayed listen i wanted to get that up off of me because anytime that bitterness sets in it's a root Mm -hmm. and i can tell Mm -hmm. when people flow out of bitterness i didn't want to be bitter i did not want to be bitter so I went through the deliverance um, and you know, the deliverance I went through, it was with like a, a white group of ladies who are in Austin. I sat down with them. I renounced some things, denounced some things, et cetera, you know, because sometimes just because you don't sleep with somebody, there can be a soul tie that you don't even, I mean, it could be a lot of stuff going on and we were talking about getting married. So it was just a lot of prophecies, just so much stuff that was over our head that I just wanted to get, off of me. Now I will say that it took me a couple of years to really get it, to get it out of me because I could not understand what happened. Right. And I remember this woman, uh, she was from the islands and she prayed for me. And she said, she said, um, she said, I see a guy coming, a dark skinned, brown skinned guy. He's tall and he looks nothing like this other guy. She's like, you're going to marry him. I remember rebuking what she saw. Like, I don't want to hear that. That is not the will of the Lord, et cetera. Right. So anyway, um, then it happened, but I did the deliverance and all of that as well. So, uh, James went through deliverance. He went with the same people years later. He went, walked through, denounced relationships, sexual ties, whatever. Mm -hmm. I do believe in that, you know, like before you get married, just anything that may be lingering. I believe in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so important to do that. I remember when we went through the deliverance process, it was so funny because um, we were kind of throwing away like letters and pictures and, you know, notes and gifts and all those different things. And I remember that same night I had a dream and this was before we got married. This was during the engagement phase. And I had a dream and I had a dream that I, um, I saw like a gift bag in my husband's closet. And it had a letter in there. And I remember in the dream, the letter was speaking and the letter was speaking. And as it was speaking, I um, <clears throat> I got up from the dream and I was like, hey, babe, as you're going through your deliverance process, there is something in your closet that you that is speaking because it's the words that were written is binding agreements that was still speaking over him before we even got married. Child, I'm telling you, that's crazy. Let me tell you because I know I just like girl, when it's good to me, I'm gonna start singing all types of stuff. This is good to me. Do you? Oh my goodness, that thing right there can preach like words create worlds. Mm-hmm. It was binding a covenant, literally, yeah. right? So, lit uh, and 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 then the intention behind the exactly. letter, right? So, my husband, this is when he wasn't my husband, but he believed that he was going to marry a girl since college, right? So, he had been out of college um at this time. Maybe the girl had a she had a dream her freshman year that she was or sophomore year that she was going to marry James. So, she, her roommate told James about the dream. 
So he pursued this woman from sophomore year, freshman year of college until I met him. Well, James was 30 when I met him, right? So you're talking about maybe he got out of college at 23 years old. So maybe for like years, maybe Mm -hmm. he had been believing God that this was his wife. So when he met me and he was like, I hope she don't think I'm her husband. Like he was telling somebody at the job, which was so (laughs) crazy. I found that out. Hope she don't think I'm her man. But he, our first date, he went on a fast that day and he fasted. And he said that he, when he fasted, he opened up the Bible, like just kind of dropped it. And it opened up to a page that said, let go of the unbelieving wife. And this was important because he had taken this woman as his wife in his heart spirit. He didn't Mm -hmm. even, I mean, he may have messed with a couple of girls, but he always told them like, you're not my wife. I know who I'm supposed to marry. He took this girl out. He let her know his intention. He wanted to marry her. You know what I'm saying? So he was just like, no, I want to be with her. So when he, when we went on our first date, he was like, Hey, I, um, I, we just need to slow this down because I thought that somebody else was my wife. And I was like, well, we can slow this all the way down. Take me back to the hotel right now. Cause I done yeah. flew out here. I, <laughs> I met her, like he's not it. He doesn't love me, whatever, you know, just being dramatic, and, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, later he ends up asking me, well, can I come up and tell you at the hotel what's going on? And I was like, hold on. I'm not with that. What you trying to get in my room for? But when he came to the room, he was just letting me know what happened. And he was like, I am just, it's crazy to me because when I stood behind you at church, because he was like the armor bearer at the church, he said, the Lord told me to love you. And I could not understand when I had put my hope and trust in this other girl. Wow. Right. So her dream that was spoken found him for years. Yep. Yep. Until he met me. Yeah. And then it just wasn't anymore. So I used to, I, I used to love this movie called Um, He's Just Not That Into You. Yeah. Because in that movie it says there's always an exception. Right. I was the exception when he mm. met me. It was like, uh-uh, that's it. No more, no more staying thinking that this woman that's is your right. wife. No more praying over this, no more fasting over this. Here goes the woman who you're supposed to marry. Wow, 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 wow. And that's so, so powerful because like I said before, because I was having dreams about my husband, I never said anything to him. And this is where you can manipulate the process again by using spiritual language. Because what she did was that was a binding agreement. That was a word that she spoke that kept his mind ruminating, just that demonic rumination to feel like, Anyone that I end up with, I'm not going to end up staying with because it's already locked in my mind that I need to be with this person. It's kind of like a mind bending spirit. It was bending his mind. And in this dream, when I told my husband, I was like, babe, well, we were engaged at the time. I was like, yeah, there's a letter and it's speaking. I could hear the words and hear the woman's voice speaking, his ex-girlfriend. And um, he woke up. I mean, I woke up. I told him the dream. So he actually went into his closet. When he went into his closet, he found a gift bag. He was like, babe, I had this. She gave me a gift long time ago, but I completely forgot about it. And it was sitting in his closet. When he opened up the gift bag, it was a card with a letter and money attached to it. And he said, man, I didn't even know it's been sitting here for a whole year. And I didn't even know because he said when he got the gift, he kind of just threw it in the closet and forgot about it. And once when he opened it, he saw the words, you know, and what the words were. And he was like, "Okay," so he burned it, threw it away. He gave the money away as well. He didn't even keep it. So I'm saying all of that to say that when you're going through that deliverance process or you're stepping into engagement that deliverance is important for you to actually see for the person and for them to see for you as well, especially breaking off the attachments, you know, words, letters, gifts, clothing. I had to get rid of certain, you know, clothing. And, and, and I remember I had bought like this lingerie and I was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to um, use this when I get married. But I even got rid of that because I had to really restructure my mind to say, Lord, how do you see me as a bride? 
What do you want me to wear? And I remember when I asked the Lord that he gave me a dream and I saw <clears throat> in the dream, I saw this woman with a particular lingerie on and the, I could hear the voice of the Lord. And he said, I do not want my bride looking like a harlot. Ooh. And it was a specific one. I'm not saying all lingeries are bad. I'm not no, saying that at all. But it, but it, but, but listen, this is real. This is real. This is something, I mean, you guys, this is grab your tea because mm -hmm. this right here is the one I'm telling you, I felt such something on this interview, yeah. even how the attire with, and I know we, we just a couple of more minutes, uh, your kids. Yeah. My son, you just know. woke up. Hi, Papa. <laughs> Can you give mommy a few more minutes? Yeah. Okay. Can you sit down? Yeah. Okay, baby. Okay, I'm gonna do this a couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah. I love what you just said. People were literally. I talk to women who dress a certain type of way and feel that that is the way they're gonna catch their man. And I'm telling you right now, that is not the way that you're going to catch this man of God. Mm -hmm. It may be something for us time. Maybe he could be a like, oh, like, oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to No, You have to change. Why? Jude 1 and 23 says, mm -hmm. save others by snatching them out of the fire and to others show mercy mixed with fear, but hate their very clothes stained by their sinful L lust mm. right hating the very clothes the very garment that was stained by the flesh so things that I wore when I was outside of the will of the Lord or when I was in my sinfulness right even the way I mean and that's Mary talk we'll have to do a part two for marriages mm -hmm. but there are things that I can't do that I did in the world because I know that that was not that right there was not, mm -mm, that wasn't the heart of God, right? Mm -hmm. And so utilizing clothes to seduce, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Oh, yeah. Woman of God, listening right now, utilizing clothes to seduce this man to come mm -hmm. into your arms, you are now still operating as in witchcraft. Absolutely. Wow. Witchcraft is anything that has to do with your intention behind That's right. it. It's the That's intention right. that makes it witchcraft. That's My right. intention was a work of the flesh. My intention was to manipulate people. That's why I tell people like marketing and stuff online. Like, no, you have to be very careful to mm -hmm. not operate in the works of the flesh in doing anything because mm -hmm. it can lead people astray. Absolutely. And you astray. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! So Amen. To, thank you so much, look, girl. We yeah. gotta do it. We ought to do a part two for the nine now <laughs> and two thousand. Okay. So I want to ask you: Can you please say a prayer for the women? Absolutely. In their waiting time before you uh, finish, and then once you're done praying, I want you to tell them where they can reach you and contact you at. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So Father, I thank you. I thank you so much for this time and this opportunity just to gather and just to share and to fellowship with one another in the light of Christ. Father, I thank you right now for even the women that are listening, the women that are joining us, and even the women that would watch the replay. I pray that you'll be able to speak to them. I pray that this broadcast, oh God, will just release light bulbs and revelation and insight for them, oh God, to be able to know how to wait properly, to be able to to know how to be content in their singleness, to be able to know how to really do things according to your word, your way, your heart, and your in and your um, insight, Father. Father, I thank you right now for just. Um, singing your songs of deliverance over them. I thank you, Jesus, for doing a new work in them. I thank you for causing them, oh God, to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. I thank you for causing them, oh God, to unpack the trauma, to unpack the hurt, to unpack the disappointments, to unpack the bitterness, to unpack, oh God, the offense, to unpack, oh God, the things that have kept them bound or that have kept them, oh God, apprehensive or that have kept them, oh God, angry with you. I pray, oh God, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I pray, Father, that you will, O oh Lord, will just speak to them. I pray that you will encourage them and build them. Let them understand their uniqueness. Let them understand, O oh God, that you can be their covering, that you can be their husband, that you can be their protector, their provider. Let them understand, O oh God, that they do not have to move into witchcraft or to become crafty in their dealings in Jesus' name. But Father, I thank you that your word says the wife has made herself ready. I pray pray that these women will become a wife unto you first before they are a bride unto a man. And Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that you would teach them, allow the Holy Spirit to be their helper, allow the Holy Spirit to be their comforter, allow the Holy Spirit, oh God, to be able to guide them and to lead them into all truth concerning the relationship that they have with you and with others. Father, I just thank you for the new work. I thank you for opening up doors that no man can shut. And I thank you for shutting doors, even the doors that they have opened. I thank you that you are not intimidated or you are not afraid of their dark places. You are not afraid of their sins. You are not afraid, oh God, of the things that they have done in the secret. But Father, that you will love lovingly redeem them and set them free. You will lovingly, oh God, wash over them. You will lovingly, oh God, sing over them. You will lovingly, oh God, say that this is my beloved and my beloved is mine. And Father, I thank you for claiming them. And I thank you for marking them in this season. Let this be a time and a season for the brides to arise. Let this be the time and the season, oh God, for the brides to make themselves ready. Father, I thank you right now for causing these women to be like the five wise virgins, always having their lamps burning, awaiting for the bridegroom, which is you, awaiting for you to appear, awaiting for you to come and talk to them. I thank you for the anointing oil, oh God, that will be upon on their lives. I pray that they would pursue the anointed one and his anointing more than algorithms. Father, I thank you that they will pursue your face and recognize, oh God, that you will shine your countenance upon them, that you would give them tenderness and meekness and kindness in the name of Jesus. I pray that these women, oh God, will be able to know who they are in you, that they can stand in the unique identity that you have called them. Father, I thank you that they they, oh God, will be able to shine bright with your brilliance, that the spotlight of heaven will be their portion, and that they, oh God, will be able to glorify you in this time and in this season. I thank you, Father for drawing them unto you. And I thank you for the new work that you are doing with them. We bless you, we honor you, and we seal this time and this broadcast under the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And that's how you get a prayer through. Thank you. Nicole, let the people know, how can they connect with you? Yes. So you can connect to me on um, Instagram, Nicole Taylor Speaks, um, or you can connect to me on Facebook, which is Nicole Taylor. I have most of my information on there. My prayer channel is on there. Um, and I also have a YouTube, but I haven't really done much yet. I have some content, but you could reach me um, as Nicole Taylor. Nicole Taylor Speaks on the Instagram as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us. I am just, oh my gosh, I can't wait to have maybe you and your husband or even you again about other topics. You are so anointed. Your voice is needed in this circle. Uh, well, not even, I'm not even in a circle, but just in this community, your voice is needed. All right. Love you. Love you guys. Join us for the next one, you guys. We are dropping every Wednesday for this. I don't know. It's seeming like a podcast. I don't know what it is, but Bye now. Bye.